Hi guys, it's Kelly Lanavola here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of watercoloring, a little bit of colored pencil. So the two um, sets that I'm going to be using are the Kindness Sentiment set and then the 10 Things. I really loved the feathers in it um, and I wanted to do kind of like a rainbow watercolor background. So I'm starting with my sentiment. If you watch my videos, you know I don't usually do this. Usually I save the sentiment for last, but I need to do this first because um, it's so big and I need it for placement of my feathers. Um, I absolutely love this sentiment set. They have, um, Honeybee Stamps has a, has a bunch of these. There's a kindness one, a thank you, blessings um, that have like large script words and then a whole bunch of other um little words that you can put together to make different sentiments. They're such a good investment. I love them. I had to get my hands on the kindness one because um, I'm all about mailing those kindness cards. Uh, if I ever mail a card, right? Anybody else suffer from that problem? But anyway, I'm working on cans and watercolor paper. So I am stamping these twice just to make sure that I get um, a bold sentiment. I stamped the sentiment with Black Simon Says Stamp Ink, which is uh, waterproof, but then I am stamping my feathers with a medium gray ink. The one I'm using is actually silver lining from W plus nine, but any gray ink that's waterproof will totally work for this. I just didn't want it to compete with my sentiment. I wanted my sentiment to be super bold. So I started in my mini misty, and then I realized that in order to have these feathers hang over, I was going to have to switch to my larger misty. So I didn't want to clean the stamps in between because I'm lazy. You guys know this. Um, and so I just basically used the piece of acetate that comes with the stamp set to lay down over my card base so that I could position my dirty stamps and not have to keep cleaning them in between. So I'm just going through and filling in the whole area around the sentiment. Again, I am stamping these twice so that I have a good impression for my watercoloring. So I did not, um, I didn't do the watercoloring. Let me tell you why I didn't do the watercoloring. A, because I'm a mom. Um, and so I was in the process of making this card and my son comes in and says, mommy, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, actually you can, <laughs> you can. Um, when I do um, videos, a lot of times I leave my errors and I leave my mistakes in because I just, it breaks my heart to think that there are card makers out there who think that they're the only ones who never make mistakes. Um, we all do and there's always a way to fix it. And so I thought that this would be, um, I guess, a good way. And I have, I've done videos like this before to show you um, that there is always a way to fix it because I didn't even paint this. I let my four-year-old paint it. And so I showed him how to, I'm using Distress Oxides. Um, I showed him how to uh, smush the little uh, ink pad down on my Ranger craft mat. I had to show him one time after that. He's a pro, you know, I can do it, ma. I don't need your help. So then after he would paint one feather, I would ask him if I could have a turn. Um, and so then I would, I don't like what I call manufactured edges. So I like to go in and pull out little bits of color, add little droplets around there. So it looks, has like more of a splatter effect. Um, and then there are some areas where I would add some darker color. So the first reason, like I said, is because I'm mom. Um, the, the second reason is, um, this is such a, that was him pulling his sleeve up, huh? um, but it's, it's hard to find time. We are all um, most, I mean, over, just overextended, tired. I have a bunch of jobs in addition to, you know, being a wife, being a mom, running a household, all of those things. And then the, the jobs that I have where I work outside of my house. And so this is an opportunity for me to accomplish things that I want to accomplish. So have a little bit of time to just relax and do. But it's also an opportunity for me to spend some time with my son. Um, and I think we're all trying to do what we can um, to make sure that we get all of the important things done in our life. And so for me, card making is important because it's a, a way that I de-stress. Um, everybody is stressed in their life. I have a particularly stressful job. And, um, but also I want to spend time with my, <laughs> my child. I didn't have him to never see him. Right. Um, so in this yellow one, he did put some green down there. Um, and I just covered it up. I wasn't stressing about it. It wasn't any big deal. If you don't 
if you don't feel like you can cover it up, then you can do what I'm going to do here because he took the blue, which is Salty Ocean, all the way to the edge and I didn't want that. I wanted a lighter edge. So I just went in with a clean uh, paper towel and just blotted it up. He's going to do it again. He's going to just keep painting that same area and I'm going to have to go in and blot it again. It's it's not a big deal. Um, typically, Distress Oxides, Distress Inks will pick up very nicely he also decided that he was going to mix colors here. Like I had been trying to keep them a little bit separate. Um, and he decided he was going to mix the Lucky Clover with the Salty Ocean. Now I will say <laughs> design wise, I was telling him which feathers to paint which colors. Um, because I didn't want there to be a situation where he was deciding to mix colors and I had like an orange and a blue next to each other. All of a sudden I got brown and then I'm in a situation. Um, so we just went through and he painted each one and then I made any, um, I guess adjustments to it that I wanted to make. Um, but all in all, it really was just him slapping, like having fun slapping down some color. I should note, um, we're using a number eight round brush by the Silver Brush Company. Um, just because we're covering a large area, we're not doing any sort of detail painting. Um, and it's going to get like the most pigment on the paper. So the colors that I used are um, Abandoned Coral, Wilted Violet, um, did I use Squeezed Lemonade? Mm, I feel like I used Fossilized Amber, Spiced Marmalade, um, Salty Ocean, Lucky Clover, and then Picked Raspberry. So that's the whole, the whole rainbow card. Um, and again, here he's kind of mixing um, colors. Some areas are lighter, some areas are darker. To me, that's what makes watercolor pretty is the variation in them. So I'm not, you know, stressing about that whatsoever. Um, just letting them kind of do their thing. This particular background, don't mind the bumping of the camera. You know, I got a four-year-old on my lap. Um, but this card would be pretty just like this. I'm going to do a couple of other things. Um, first of all, I use Distress Oxide because I like the oxidation look. So I am going to go back in um, with just some clean water and kind of spatter that on to break up some of the color. I'm just going to blot that up with a paper towel. This wasn't as extreme of a difference as I would have liked. So I'm going to do it again. And this time I'm going to heat set it. Uh, and what that does is basically leaving that little water droplet there, it allows the pigment to kind of pool in the droplet and then pushes some of the color um, to the outside edges. And I kind of have liked that look more because I have so much color on here. I, I really did want to break up the background. The other way I'm going to do that, and I'm also going to add some shine um, because I'm all about them glitters, all about them glitters. Um, I'm going to use Perfect Pearls in the color Perfect Pearls. I switched over to a number two round brush for this um, because the spatters are finer and I was trying to be aware of my sentiment. I didn't want to cover up that, um, you know, black sentiment because I want that to be the focal point. Um, I didn't want to cover that up with the perfect pearl. So every once in a while, you'll see me going in with just like my fingertip and kind of moving um, one of the dots off of my sentiment. I am going to be using some Prismacolor pencils just to go in and kind of add a little bit of detail back into these because they are very soft. Again, card, totally fine like this. Um, this is just something that I wanted to do to, I guess, to just make them stand out a little bit more. So for each color of ink, I have picked a matching colored pencil and then I'm also going to be using white. I'm learning right along with you guys. When I do a card, I never make the same card twice, first of all. Um, and second of all, I um, I just believe in that, like I'm always learning just like you're always learning and it's great if we can do that together and I can just kind of let you know what I learned. So I originally went in with the darker color first and then went in with the white to blend it out. Um, and that's how I did this whole feather, this pink one at the bottom. And I found that it was kind of unnecessary to go in with the darker color first. I could go in and lay down the white and then go back over it with the dark. Instead of doing it twice, I could just do it one time by reversing my order and making the card kind of that much faster. Um, because I'm not necessarily looking... 
you know, I'm, I'm not doing like a, um, a background or where colored pencil is going to be the main um, medium I'm using to add color. I don't need it to be um, super smooth. I don't need the blend to be totally awesome. I just need there to be some color in these feathers. Um, so for the pink one, I did do it two times. You'll see as I move um, along to this one, this is the Abandoned Coral. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm starting with the white and I'm not coloring every section. I didn't, again, feel like it was necessary. I'm just picking out some areas um, that I would like to add a little bit of shading to. There's nothing wrong with coloring the whole feather. That would probably be really pretty too. Um, I just didn't, I guess I wanted the kind of the watercolor to to be there and this to just be um, an accent or an embellishment that, that kind of made them pop forward a little bit. So after I went through and did that, I was like, that's much faster, happier with that. And then as again, as I worked my way through them, um, I found some other things that I liked. So I liked leaving some areas just white. And then on this little purple one here, I found that I liked having some areas that were just dark. So throughout the, and I'm going to go back and get the other ones because, you know, I've, I got to be consistent now. I can't just be crazy all over the place. Um, so I'm going to go back in and start adding some darker colors into the ones I've already colored. And then from here on out, any of the feathers that I'm coloring will have a white area, a dark area, and then one where the two are kind of mixed. Um, and I really liked the way that those came out, how there was different kind of depths and dimensions to the coloring. So once I have all of the coloring done, um, there was only, there was one other thing I wanted to do. And originally I wanted to use a gold metallic pen because I don't know, feathers are usually like dipped in gold. You hardly ever see them with silver accents. Uh, but my gold pen was not working. And honestly, I don't necessarily know that gold would have been the color to go with before we get to the metallic pen. I'm going in with a, I think it's a 70% cool gray. I like to outline my images. That's just me. This part isn't necessary, but I can't go in with my usual gel pen um, or EK Success writing pen to do that because Prismacolor pencils are wax-based and it won't work. So I'm going in with a very sharp um, medium gray and just outlining them. Back to this metallic marker. So my gold one would not work. Um, and like I said, I don't necessarily know that that would have been the best choice for this particular color palette anyway. So I am using silver. I'm using a silver Sakura um, gel pen and I'm just going in and outlining some of the areas, not the whole feather. I don't want it to be like blinding off the page, but I did want there to be some more shine. You know, right now, all the only glitters I have on there are the perfect pearls and that's clearly not enough. Um, so I'm just, you know, picking some different areas where maybe I haven't added some color or I'm just outlining a certain section. There isn't a right or wrong way to do this. There isn't like, I, I certainly think you can't add too much because there's glitter in this pen, guys. Um, but I just went with um, like a medium amount. So you can see here, um, it's almost like silver foiling, how, how the light catches it. In order to complete my sentiment, I am going to be doing some heat embossing. I decided to go with a very simple sentiment. It says, kindness is contagious, uh, which is true, by the way. Um, so here I just entreated, uh, treated my black... Um, paper with my ink it ink do embossing bag. I'm going to stamp down this sentiment in Versamark ink and then I'm going to use white Simon's stamp um, embossing powder to put on there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, by the way by when I'm doing this I always have my heat gun heating up so I have minimal warping. Um, I'm going to take the heat gun to it and wait until it's um, you know smooth and melted. I trim that down into uh, a little label and then I'm going to pop that up with some scotch foam tape and just kind of position it to the bottom right-ish. Um, that's a rule of thirds thing. So, you know, I, unless you're putting something directly in the center, you want to put it where like the thirds meet if you break your card up into thirds. Um, so in order to accent that, I didn't want to take away from the background, but I did want to add a little bit of something. So I just used some clear sequins to accent the sentiment. I like to add a little drop of glossy accents to the top of mine just to make sure they're secure in the mail um, when I do mail them, right? 
Um, and then that's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.